JC, what's up, man? Welcome to Dad Edge. I'm doing great. I really appreciate this. is very kind of you, Larry, uh, allowing me to share my story on your podcast with your listeners. Um, I really hope this is going to be an impact for a lot of families and uh, very kind of you. I'm, I'm happy, man. I'm, I'm honored, by the way. And you and I were jamming before we hit record today, but you found you found the Dad Edge back in what, 2019, you said? Yeah, it was about 2019. I <clears throat> had made some changes back then. Uh, one of the things that had happened back then was, it's funny, we're talking about, it's a dad show, you know, so my little boy plays baseball, and we were in Tennessee. Um, I heard you play baseball as well during high school, right? I, I didn't, I was in grade school, and then high school, I wrestled, but yeah, I did play, I played baseball almost like my, for Little League from the time I was like in kindergarten until eighth grade, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah, so um, my little boy was in a, tur- in a tournament up in uh, Tennessee, Pigeon Forge, it was a yeah. Cal Ripken tournament. Yeah. And uh, he had a he had an off game, and uh, he ended up getting benched because he didn't hustle down the line. And uh, we were in a cabin, and I'll never forget this. You know, I let into him so hard, Larry. I was like, man, you got to give effort 100% and get after it. Mind you, at that time, I'm 260 pounds. Uh, I can't walk up a flight of stairs without my without being winded. Um, you know, our areas of our marriage are not as strong. Uh, and you just, you know, you, you, you're talking to this kid you love so much about giving effort. And you know there's so much more effort you can give. And something happened around that time. Actually, um, July 31st, I came across a podcast that Ed Milet did with David Goggins. And uh, it was on YouTube. I listened to it. I watched it. <clears throat> and his message resonated with the whole accountability mirror. And, um, that August 1st, I just took off, man. I just started waking up at five o'clock in the morning, running, eating better. And we had a conversation the night before where I told him, I said, look, I apologize for what happened. Um, I was talking about giving a hundred percent and, you know, I just let into you so hard, man. I felt so bad, but I promise it's never going to happen again. If I'm asking you to give effort is because I'm, I'm, I'm not lacking in any area. So I promise it's going to happen again. And, and I took off and I, I just, in self-improvement, wanted to learn to get better reading as much as I could, getting material, anything that I could on like marriage, parenting, um, just get and anything I could get better on. And then I came across you. I was searching online and then uh, you came up in that podcast section. So I guess you were doing something right at that time because you came up as a hit in that area and uh, started following there. And then I, and I follow, I know Andy Frisella has been on your show and uh, all of them, right? All those individuals bring tremendous value so it was a big help because <clears throat> there was a lot of changes that happened during that time. And it was a mindset shift. It had a lot of progression, dropped a lot of weight. Marriage is getting better. Relationship with kids is getting better. Things are doing good. And we had a lot of progression during that time, you know. And then as, as time progressed, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about today is last year in June, our oldest was shot and killed. He was 25 years old. And uh, we, we found out he was dealing with substance abuse, which we were caught off guard. And... Um, that's something we're going to talk about today. And, and then we, you know, just, you know, how do you, how do you uh, put steps forward together after that? And a lot of awareness for parents. One of my goals today, Larry, and I know you've had a lot of big people on this show is I want this to be one of the most shared shows you have. Um, obviously not because of me, but because of the value we're going to bring. And I want this message to, to really resonate with a lot of parents, not just dads, but moms. And if you, if anybody that's going to listen to this, that you share with other kids, teenagers, right? Maybe not as young, but if they're teenagers, they're jumping into those years where it gets really difficult. Um, you know, you might want to share this with them and other parents as well. So that way the word gets out because it's going to be a lot of information that we were caught off guard with and certain steps, things you should look for <clears throat> that uh, could be helpful. So, uh, but I really appreciate your help, uh, allowing me on. I'm very grateful for this and I want to give back because I'm indebted to you, my brother. I really am. I really, really am. That's so incredibly kind of you, man. It really is. And to be honest, what I'd like to do is normally what I do with shows is I, I like to get a good picture of the man of like how he grew up, right? Because those are some breadcrumbs of like how we operate now, right? Uh, current base of what your what your family looks like. But what I'd really like to do is actually start backwards a little bit because you know you definitely shared this uh, this incredible, you know, devastating, pivotal moment, worst nightmare any father could ever experience. And that is the death of a child, death of your 25-year-old son. So uh, I know you shared with me how basically it happened. 
But I'm also so curious too of you 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 mentioned in there that you're going to talk about some things to look for. Some things that maybe in hindsight that were there that maybe we didn't really pay too much attention to. But what did happen in June of last year? <clears throat> so what happened was a and this is all based off of uh what we get from police reports cuz obviously we weren't present. But um he was living we were we're from Miami. And um, when we found out he was in substance abuse, our, our family just went, I mean, we, we were having challenges from before, uh, but we just really didn't. My wife kind of had an idea, um, but I was a little in denial about the situation that maybe he was having challenges with substance abuse, but my wife knew there was something off. And um, he was living down in Homestead. I don't know if you know anything about down here, down in South Florida, but Homestead is kind of like a rural area down South, a lot of farmland. And... Um, he was renting a little apartment there because on, on that day, it was a Friday. It was actually, it was on a Monday. He was going to uh, check into a rehab that day. So uh, there's a little convenience store. He used to go there in the mornings and, and get breakfast and, and food and stuff like that. And he knew the owners. He knew the son as well. <clears throat> but as it turns out, the word is that uh, he was in the bathroom getting high is what they said. Um, and uh, it turned into an altercation with the owner's son. From what we understand, they got in a fight. Uh, he had dropped some money, and then he had left. Um, but then he came back to get his money. Um, when he came back to get his money, the son shot him and killed him, the owner's son. Uh, so he died on scene right there. You know, he passed away right there. And um, you know, that's that's that day was uh, that was June of last year. You know, it was a very difficult day, right? Um, but that's the it, it, one of the reasons I bring that up is because. We think if he wasn't on substance abuse, would he have been living down there? The answer is no, right? Uh, where he had been positioned where he was, the answer is no. Uh, there's a lot of unanswered questions. Um, that's one of the things later on, if you could remind me, we'll talk about, you know, asking that question why and then kind of replacing it with how. Um, I think that's an important topic that we can touch on later. But, um, you know, there's so many unanswered questions, you know, that we don't have, uh, which is the difficult part behind this, you know, because as a parent, you know, you get emotions inside of you where you got anger. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of regret. We could talk about that later as well. Um, certain topics, you know, of, of regret, you know, there's a lot of pain. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what happened that day. Take us to the moment that you were informed of this. How, how were you notified? So uh, my wife, um, that night, you know, she, that day she knew something was off, you know, um, he was supposed to check into a rehab that day, but Right. He wasn't answering. And I, I really thought that, you know, he was just kind of uh, avoiding. Right. I was like, you know, it's he's just being him. Right. And, and he's probably not going to he's not going to check in. So he's not answering because he's just avoiding. But my wife had that gut feeling, man. She she knew something was wrong. She really did knew something was wrong. And she went she, down. What did she say? Like, what were some of the things? Do you remember what she said? Like, hey, this something doesn't feel right. Or like, what were some of the words? Do you remember? She knew. She, knew. she was like, babe, something's wrong. Some, I'm telling you something's wrong. You know, this is not, this is not a, it's kind of like that feeling you got inside. Yeah. You know? I really thought opposite. I really did. And, uh, you know, she went to his apartment and uh, his apartment was open, you know, and, and he was, obviously he wasn't there. but. Um, that whole night, she was just frantic, you know. She, well, we went because he's my stepson. She tried going everywhere to see where he was at, you know. And and then she got a call. Um, she got a call that he was shot and killed that day. You know, he was dead. And um, I never forget my wife calling me. You know, it's a pain that you hear. That's so powerful, right? Because you hear talking about, you know, that he's dead. And um, he was shot and killed, and so powerful because it's it's, it's kind of like you know you you some from like the movies right you you watch things in movies and you watch people like they're in immense pain and challenge and you can never really replace that and it's it's like a movie you know I actually I heard um Granger I think his name is Granger the country guy the uh, country yeah. music so uh, he actually was I, I listened to his story and he talked about the movie that plays in your head over and over and over and uh there's certain moments you know certain things that happen especially that day that phone call in general um 
And one of the one of the crazy things, Larry, from that day was when my wife called me, just listening to my wife just screaming in pain, right? And the reason why I'm being vivid with this is because yeah. uh, I think that uh, people need to associate pain to decisions that they sometimes make for pleasure, right? Um, and if they were to associate pain to decisions they make for pleasure, maybe they they might not they might not make those decisions, right? Whether it's drug consumption, alcohol uh, consumption. Uh, bad decisions you're making, maybe being unfaithful in your marriage or doing bad. Who knows? I don't know what the situation may be, right? Obviously, they're, they're, they're all interrelated, but things that sometimes bring us pleasure can cause massive pain for others. And I think that a message like this that brings so much pain um, can really help others that want to make decisions that might seem like pleasure-based uh, or things you shouldn't be doing. Maybe they'll avoid them you know, because it could affect your family. And one of the things that happened that night that's so powerful, Larry, is when I hung up the phone that day, you know, the last conversation I had with him was about April, the last conversation we had. And it was a really bad conversation. Uh, a lot of hurtful things were said. Um, you know, when, when you're a parent, when you're a family going through something like this, you don't know, there, there's no book how to maneuver this. No, okay, I wish, we had a, I wish we had a manual. Yeah, that could talk about how to deal with somebody that's dealing with substance abuse challenges in those areas, and we didn't know how bad it was, but it was bad. A, but we don't we don't have a manual on that. And the last conversation we had was horrendous. It was horrible. Um, a lot of hurtful things were said between and, you and your son. Yeah, a lot of yeah. hurtful things were said, and we didn't talk again for a few months. But what the the funny part about that is that when your gut tells you to do something, you should take action on it. Because for a long time, I had in my mind to reach out to him, you know, because we always we, we, we had challenges before many challenges in our family, but we would always fix it. Right. No matter what the situation was. And, and we come back and talk and, and, and mend things, even if it wasn't as right. But we, we put it back together as much as we could. But this time I just I had in my mind so many times to call him. Right. Just reach out to him. You know, I mean, it, it, just do it. And, and every time I, that came to my mind, I said, it's not the right time. It's not the right time. It's not the right time. And when I hung up the phone, all you could think is, you know, time ran out. You know, there, there's no more time. You know, there's there's no more phone calls. There's no more texts. There's no more nothing, you know. And uh, I put you in a perspective where you, where you start to realize that, you know, when you got something in your heart, when you got something in your gut, you got that feeling, you got to take action on it, no matter how uncomfortable it is, right? You got to do that because that's one of the emotions that kicked in at that moment, talking about when you heard that, when I heard the call of how I found the information that had happened. And that was the first thing that popped in my mind when I hung up the phone, you know, thinking about what an idiot you are. You know, how did you, you're going to have to live the, with this regret the rest of your life, you know, that, that you didn't take action on something you should have, you know? Are you okay if we dig into that just a little bit? Because I'm just, I'm really curious about that. <clears throat> Listen, and, man, uh, I'm, I, I want you to know something, Larry. I'm not, I'm not holding back anything. Yeah. Okay? Because for many years we lived as a family, you know, hiding so many things, our challenges with him, <clears throat> our obstacles, things we were going through. And I really don't care right now. I really don't care. I want to yeah. share a message that if people judge, great. If they have something to say, great. I really don't care. I want this to be a message that could help somebody. Because I think that the biggest, the with this grief, <clears throat> I think the, the biggest help is to know that somebody's being helped by this, right? Somebody is going to, because that's the best way that I can yeah. take Jeremy's challenge and Jeremy's obstacle, how we could put this into a positive and uh, impact someone. I don't care if it's one person that listens to this, that sends you a message and says, Hey, um, you know, that media, that, that podcast you did with JC and we were talking about his wife and his son and, and all the, that challenge, it really made yeah. a difference. That for me would it be worth, I mean, there's no dollar amount you could put on something like that. You yeah. can't. I appreciate that, man. I have no doubt we'll get a lot of DMS on this one because the, your story is just so incredibly raw. The question I have for you around, you know, I should reach out, I should reach out. And there was something that was there that, you know, really just didn't allow you to step into that. Like, it's just not the time. I think about my own life. I think about life with 
you know, the, the guys who do life with us or just people, family, mm -hmm. friends in general, right? We all have those people in our life that we have, maybe there's a strained relationship there. Maybe there's a season or a year, whatever, where we're not speaking, or there's something there that doesn't allow us to take that first step, right? And just say, man, like I would really love to, really love to reach out, but it's just not the time. For you, what were the themes that came up for you that were maybe some of the, the, the thoughts that were like, this is not the right time because? It, it's a mixture of things. It's anger. Yeah. Um, it's ego, right? The biggest yeah. one is yeah. ego. A lot of people don't want to admit that, but now I can, I can pinpoint that, right? Ego is the biggest killer of so many things for, for so many people out there, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I would think to myself, you know, well, why am I going to reach out to him? You know, that last conversation we had was so hurtful and all these things we've done and, you know, all the time invested and how could he say something like that? And how could this, you know, and all, if you notice all those things I'm saying, were all about me, right? It's all about me. And when you operate like that, you're not operating the right way. You know, you, you're not operating in alignment with how as humans we're supposed to operate. And if there was no ego involved, would I have I have called him and, and told him, hey, man, you know, bring him in, give him a hug? The answer is yes, right? So ego is probably the biggest factor. It's interesting that you say ego because when it comes to any type of strained relationship, I'm not sure if this is what maybe you were feeling, but I definitely have had my fair share of strained relationships, you know, and growing up, you know, with parents and my biological father and my mother, you know, like just a lot of things going on. And I understand, dude, first, firsthand that ego piece for me. And I don't know if it was the same for you. And I think this goes to a lot of people that have strained relationships in some way, shape or form. But here, here was my thought process a long time ago. And to be honest, like I look at it now and I'm like, and I'm further along in life now. And I'm like, what bullshit, what a flawed way to look at this. Right. And I, I, I see it now but I did not see it then. But here was my thought. If I reach out to you, like, so, and there's been many times in my life where like you get pinged, right? I should reach out to that person. I really should reach out to that person. Like I want to make amends or I just want to have contact or I just want something like a forgiveness or renewal or whatever. And then there's that ego. And the ego has always told me, if I reach out to you, then that is me telling you everything that you have done to devastate this relationship is now okay. Which I think is a really, quite honestly, a flawed way to look at it. Because, and I didn't even realize that until I had um, Gary John Bishop on, who has, you and I are recording this podcast. He came on last week, but he was on December 1st of 2023. And he talked about this in depth. And he said, a lot of people, when it comes to renewing a relationship in some way, shape, or form, if I reach out to you, that's me saying everything that you did to me that was wrong is now okay. And that's actually not the case at all. But for some reason, that's a lot of what we tell ourselves. And again, I don't want to speak for you, but I'm curious, was that the story you were telling yourself, part of the story you were telling yourself, or, or maybe not at all, maybe something totally different? It's a mixture of all of that. It's a mixture of all of that, right? And, you know, if you think about it, real growth is you reaching out to a person that's hurt you or has done certain things that you think were incorrect. And you, some situations, it's not about forgiveness because there's sometimes, you know, it's, it's certain things you can't forgive, right? Um, things happen. And obviously, you, you, I know they talk about a lot about you, ha you, you got to be able to forgive in the future, but there's certain painful things that happen, but I think that um, when you put yourself in a position that you become vulnerable and you take that initial step, what that means is you have, have grown past those limitations that kill you inside. 
because if you think about it, that was just midget minded thinking in my perspective. Because if you go back a year and a half and you say, would that have mattered? The answer is no. Right? Right now, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even pause for a second, right? I wouldn't even pause for a second to pick up the phone and call or text or even drive to his place and like knock his door down and be like, hey man, listen, we need to talk, right? We we need we need to talk right now. Um, because it's a different perspective. But when you're in a different mindset and you have midget minded thinking and you're operating out of the wrong pretense, everything's about you, everything is about what happened and you're reaching out shows a sign of weakness in certain factors and, and that's not true. You know, you, what, what you're doing is you're reaching out for two reasons. Number one is that person might be feeling the same thing, that they want to reach out to you, but they don't know how to do it, number one. And number two is you're healing yourself and, and, and eliminating the opportunity for regret, right? Eliminating that opportunity for regret, especially if you love the person and you care for the person. If you don't, it's different, right? But if you love and care the person, you're eliminating the opportunity for regret because if something happens like what happened to us, there's no second chance. That's it. It's over. Can I be honest with you about something? Tell me. Anybody who listens to my podcast know that I don't have the gift of being speechless. <laughs> but I'm speechless. <laughs> Sorry. You know, my heart goes out to you so much, man. Because as a father, like when a father shares this story of a loss of a child, one of my best friends and my business partner, uh, Jason McKenzie, who's been in the dad edge with me since 2016, like literally started the dad edge mastermind with me, tragically lost his daughter February 1st, 2023, 19 years old. She was in a car wreck. And JC, he's, like I said, my best friend. Wow. Tell him anything, right? And I have never seen a human being go through as much pain as I've seen him go through in the past year. Like, I've talked to him countless times. I've cried with him countless times. And just as you're sharing this story, if you're a father, and you even experience a conversation with another father who has experienced what you've experienced, you can't help but just get emotional in some way, shape, or form because you're like, I can't imagine that pain. Yet you're on here being one of the most generous, amazing individuals and sharing with us what that pain was and what was missed. I have to just ask you, where does your strength come from, man? Um, my wife is really strong, you know. Um, I look at her and we, we you know, we, we, really, um, we really work together to be positive role models for our kids. We got two kids. Um, that are still with us. We got a 15 year old and an 11 year old. They're great kids, Larry. They really are. My son's uh, goes to a Jesuit, Jesuit school down here in Miami. Worked really hard to get in there. So proud of him and uh, plays baseball and football. And then uh, my little girl, she's 11 and she ice skates and horse rides and she's uh, wow. she's um, a very impressive kid herself. And we really work hard to keep that. Uh, that childhood, you know, love and family and just idea of having a, a that good family, right, um, in, the, in the foresight, even with the challenge we've had, which is very difficult, you know, this, this trauma affects your kids, you know, it really does. And then at the same time, you know, you, I'm a big believer in God, you know, I mean, I don't go to church every Sunday, you know, I'm not a, uh, I'm not going to say I'm the most religious person, but I believe I'm very connected to God where I, I pray all the time. I, I, I have a big faith in God. I believe God exists, right? And um, there's a lot of power, I believe, in that. You know, just just really le leaning on your faith to... Because at a time like this, 
you question everything, right? You really do. You know, you question everything. And uh, one of the things that I told you about to, uh, to remind me of, like, you know, you asked the question, why? The question, you know, why were we chosen to, to have a, a kid that ends up in substance abuse? Um, why were we chosen as a family that our kid, not only does he end up in substance abuse, but uh, he ends up shot and dead? You know, why? Right. Um, why are we chosen as a marriage to go through this challenge? You know, why are we chosen for this? And lots of times, you know, asking why is good for certain things. Learn to get information, right, so you can get better and improve. But at the same time, when you look at negative search situations in your life, you got to be very cautious with that question, why? Because it's a very, um, it's, a, it's a question that can lead you down the wrong road. Yeah. Right? Uh, what you got to be asking your, yourself, which I really thought about this a lot, is you got to be asking how. You know, how can you grow from something like this? How can you help others from something like this? How can you impact someone from something like this? And and that question, how, becomes more of an abundance mentality on the side of, you know, becoming solution oriented. And, you know, one thing I heard, I heard Wes Watson say this, where depression is a magnification of the past and you're not going that way, right? Um, that's 100% fact. And anytime you magnify the past, you're going to go down that road fast. So you got to be on the right side. You got to be thinking about finding solutions, you know, and that comes from faith that God wants you to provide value to others because of this. And God wants you to grow from this. And and God wants you, God's not going to, you know, I believe he's not going to just put it out in front of you, but you have to put yourself in a position to find the answers, right? It's not going to be on a silver platter, but you kind of got to use your head and say, okay, you know, this is, this is meant for us to do something with this, you know, not just to let it go on the sideline. Cause I'm pretty sure there's a lot of families that go through pain like this and probably worse. I mean, look at all the situation that we have going on in different countries with wars. I mean, look, yeah, we're in pain, but I'm, 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 I'm guaranteeing you there's people that got problems a hundred times worse than us, you know, and that perspective is important. Um, you got to have perspective like that, you know, because there, there's always somebody doing worse, you know, and uh, you got to think like that. And at the same time, you got to think, what can you do with this, right? How can it be a positive, something positive for others, not a positive experience for us, but how can it be positive for others to give back and help and, and grow from it at the same time? I totally get that. Can we, can we go back though a little bit? Cause I want to ask you something because you're, you know, you're now, um, a year and a half, you know, past this incident and I'm sure that there was an evolution of you getting here, but in the beginning, I don't think you would be a human being if there wasn't probably some anger in there. Right. I know, I know for a lot of us, depending on what's happened to us, is something as tragic as, as we, we lost a son, you know, I've had clients of mine who their dad took their own life, right? Them growing up, right? Nice. We've had uh, men who do life with us who have lost their spouse to cancer. We have had men who have lost children. We've had men who have lost things, right? Whether it's something like their job that they could go get something else, right? Not nearly as devastating as a death. Or men have been stricken with their own type of things. We have, we've had, it's kind of crazy, man, like, we had six or seven guys in 2023 in our community that were battling cancer this past, this last year. Well, wow. it's like, wow, this is crazy. Right. But for the most part, they were very positive about it in some way, shape or form. Like they were given this crucible for a reason. However, it wasn't in the absence of also like being a human being and being very angry, right? And feeling like, what the heck, man? Like, especially like, I see this a lot with people who are faith-based, right? I'm a faith-based person, very strong with my faith. And in the past, like things that have been really, really tough, you know, there, there, there was a part of me, and I don't know if it was maybe immaturity or just the human experience of what it is, because I think that there's what is there? I, I I don't remember what the grieving process is, but there's like denial and then there's like anger and then acceptance or whatever it is. 
but there's that anger piece of like, like what the heck, man? Like, I think a lot, and I think that's a very human thing to do. It's like for, for you, it's like, I could imagine myself if I was in your boat, I would be, there would be a, a season for me that I would be so angry that I'd be like, what the heck? Like, dude, I'm like trying to like put good things into the world. Like I'm trying to be positive. Like, and this is what I get back, right? What, wh- why? And we just, there's a part of us that gets angry, but I think that's part of the human experience. Did, did you go through that? I mean, it happens all the time. Um, yeah. Mentally you go through it, you think about it because like I said before, you just question, you know, why are we getting hit with this? What's, yeah. the, what's the reason, you know? And um, some to that extent, when COVID happened, my wife's from New York and uh, her parents live in New York and her godfather passed away like in a very short time frame from COVID. And then her dad got COVID <clears throat> during that time that was in 2020. You know, I just, I really thought as a family, we wouldn't be able to deal with her dad passing away. You know, I was, I'll never forget. I went outside, man. I prayed. I was like, look, just, just whatever you do, just please let, let, let them survive. Right. Just don't let them die. I don't think we can handle this as a family. I don't think we could go through it as a marriage uh, with our kids. Just, you know, we, at that time we were having tons of challenges with Jeremy at that time we were getting a whiff of what was going on. So I really didn't think we could handle that. And like the next day he got better, man. The next day, you know, he was in the hospital. They, if they put him on a ventilator, like the, the odds of him surviving were like slim to none. Right. And he was like a day away from that. <clears throat> and he got better. And I was like, wow, you know, pretty cool. You know, like prayers were answered. Right. But then you proceed two years later and look what we get hit with. So it, it also makes you think, you know, like you, you as humans, we got to pray for and we got to think about strength to be able to deal with any challenge going forward right and we got to prepare for those things too um you know i see that you yourself improving you work out you do a lot of things to put yourself in a better mental position and lots of times people talk about those things as you know they're they're gimmicky right or do you think you're mr self-improvement mr positive you know and they got jokes about stuff like that i couldn't disagree with that more because Same you are you are preparing yourself for the things that life can throw at you and and if you're not positioning yourself to to get better and improve when you get rocked whether it's a situation like ours or anything else you get rocked in your life with you know some people really don't get back on track bro they don't get back on track and they get lost and and back to that topic does anger kick in? The answer is yes. Anger kicks in where you start thinking about why this happened to us. And then anger kicks in on there's a lot of unanswered questions, right? We don't know what happened that day. You know, for all I know, who knows what the situation was in that convenience store. There, there, there's a 50-50, right? There's a side of me that I believe if if our if Jeremy was in the wrong, right, and that guy really felt fear for his life and he made that decision based off of that, you know, I... I don't know if I, I probably do the same thing if I was protecting my store, right? And something to that extent. But what we don't know is, was it done out of anger? Was it done out of just spite, just wanting to get back at him? And, you know, you took somebody's life of somebody that, that's loved, you know? So you get these thoughts where they're not, they're not productive, let's say, you know? Um, but then at the same time, you got to operate out of, you know, you're a dad. You got a family still left, you know, and, um, you know, you got to act according, but that does pop in your mind. You know, you do, because there's a lot of unanswered questions. I think you're right. I want to, I want to ask you a question, uh, around the man that shot your son. And I'm going to get to that here in a second, but I really want to pull out a lot of what you just said. That's really, really important that I want to make sure that we catch. And that is, uh, the con- the continual path and pursuit of excellence and growth, despite what's going on. Because let's face the facts. Every human being on the planet is going to face tragedy. They are going to face things that literally throw their world completely and totally upside down. And if you're not prepared for that, if you're not growing, if you're not learning, if you're not developing, 
that can spin somebody out into a situation where they're never going to get it back. Right. I think about, I, I, you know, I love referring to the military as comparisons, right? If you take Navy SEALs, right? Everybody knows Navy SEALs, most elite warriors on the planet. But if you take a Navy SEAL, that's literally what they're built for. They're built for battle. They're built for resilience. They're built for mental and physical toughness, right? And they're on a path of continual growth like that. That's why they can operate the way they operate. That's why when adversity comes their way or obstacles come their way, they're able to navigate effectively and efficiently because of what they've learned. It's not just because like, oh, I was just born this way. No, they weren't born this way. They actually learned it. There's a lot of people out there though, and I agree with you, that the pursuit of personal development, the pursuit of creating or, or learning these skills, it's just like, oh, it's just woo-woo. I'm like, actually, they're, they're life-saving is what they are. Kind of a, a funny thing. You, you mentioned um, training and, and working out. And right now, I'm, I'm nursing my way back from a pretty substantial knee injury where my knee was bleeding internally in the joint for 10 weeks. Tried to avoid surgery. Couldn't avoid surgery. Went to surgery on November 20th. And I've been rehabbing. And you know, I'm, I, I've become obsessed with rehabbing because I want to get back to normal. And I, my mother-in-law called me yesterday and she's like, Hey, you know, I just want to check in on you. She's like, and I answered the phone and I was in the gym. <laughs> now I did get cleared from my physical therapist. I mean, I was only two, this is only two weeks post-surgery, but I got cleared to go work out. They're like, work out everything, but your lower body right now. And my mother-in-law, like, she's like, cause I answered the phone, I was in the gym and she's like, son, where are you at? Cause she could hear the music. And I go, I'm in the gym and she's just laughing because she's known me for almost 30 years. And I have been in fitness for it because it's part of my growth and development is being able to, you know, that's part of a therapeutic thing for me. And she's like, are you serious? Like you just had surgery 13 days ago. I'm like, I know I got cleared. She's like, oh, son, why? And I was like, why? Because if I didn't have this outlet, I'd be at home depressed and probably drinking beer. That's not a direction I'm willing to go, <clears throat> right? I got to go in this other direction. And I think that's a, it's what you just said. And I think that example, if we can encourage more people to invest in their growth and not to numb it, because I think, man, when you numb it, you know, you're creating something that's going to fester, that's going to become an infection that is going to sooner or later could become septic, you know, to your mental, mental health, your emotional health, physical health, those things left untreated, you know, go, they, they don't go the right way you want them to go. So I'd rather be prepared. Um, and going back to the question that I wanted to ask you, have you ever confronted or talked to the person who I haven't, I haven't. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't think I could do that right now, you know, because I don't blame you. You know, you just, um, you just think about all the pain and I think about my, uh, think about my stepson and I don't know what the situation was. Right. So, um, I don't know what his final thoughts were at that last moment. And, um, how about if my son, our oldest wasn't in the wrong and what was he going through at that last moment? Right. Um, would I have pity on him if, if I knew that he wasn't in the wrong, the answer is probably not, you know? And, um, but if he was in the wrong, um, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I kind of at the same time think about what situation he was in, you know, he took somebody's life. And so it's, uh, you know, there's a 50, 50 there, you know, and, and I kind of, uh, I talk about that a lot because I, I want my kids to understand that there's, there's, there's consequences to your decisions, right? To, for all of us. And none of us can void that. Um, but yeah, but I haven't talked to him and I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I can't, I don't know if that would happen in the future. You know, I really don't know. I don't have an answer to that right now. I don't have an answer yeah. to that right now. You know, no, I, I totally, totally get it. I'm, I'm curious um, as far as the marriage with your wife goes and then the impact to your son and daughter. How have you guys navigated through that? Um, it's strenuous, right? Because um, you know, you you're 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 digging into territory where 
dealing with grief, there's no map to deal with grief, right? There's no, uh, there's no blueprint for this. And, um, we do our best where when I see she's not doing good, um, I can't be down at the same time. And then when she sees I'm not doing good, she can't be down at the same time. Right. And we really work on that as a team. We really do work on that. Um, but you can obviously tell the difference, right? You know, there's days you wake up and, you know, you just have these thoughts in your mind that pop in out of nowhere. You know, it's like, how do you avoid it? And your your whole mood changes, your whole everything changes inside of you on a drop of a dime, you know? And uh, you know, that brings in where you, you can feel there there there's differences in there, you know. So it's it's strenuous because you, you gotta kinda maneuver where you don't wanna put more fuel on fire, right? It, you know, when you feel that anger inside of you, you know, you um you know, there's times I've shared with my wife a few times, I I got anger inside of me, you know, and and then she kind of talks me off a little bit and tells me, well, you got to think about this and this and this. And then there's times she feels like that. And I got to you th think about this and this and this. And we kind of feed off of each other on that. Uh, with our kids, you know, it's obviously painful for them. You know, it's really painful. My oldest is uh, the 15-year-old. He's very mature beyond his years. He's very mature beyond his years. And he does, a, he does a very good job of helping us out. He helps out, us out a lot. Uh, my little girl, she's um, she's a little bit more reserved. But it's impacted her a lot because, uh, for an example, I was in the office the other day, late at night, and um, she she didn't want to leave me in the office. She tells my wife, I don't know if we should leave that uh, poppy there. I don't know if we should leave him at the office. You know, she was like, why? You know, why, why, why are you worried he's living in the office? You know, she's like, well, you know, she goes, life can happen. You know, she's 11 years old. You know, what she's, wow. what she's saying. 11 years old and she's saying that? Life can happen, right? <sighs> so what that means is, She's already experienced trauma. You understand? She knows things can happen, right? So she kind of has that where if we go out, there's that that attachment where she doesn't want us to go out, you know, and I, and I understand it. You know, she, she's she gone through some trauma there that it's not easy for a kid to be able to express that stuff, you know? And, but yeah, it's it's been impactful, big impact in the marriage and with the kids. We had a conversation the other day, as a matter of fact, that we sat down and um, it was late at night. And I, I told them all this, I'm going to get home. We need to talk, you know, we need to sit down and talk because I felt that, you know, sometimes we, we spend too much time on our devices, our phones, uh, TVs, uh, playing video games, right. And, and, and doing different things, but the kids are doing and we're doing, we're busy. And I said, listen, we, we got to communicate more. We got to talk more. Uh, we got to be more present because, you know, we're all going through something that's really difficult. And, um, you know, we have to be more present because time's going to fly and and we have to grow as a family. And, and and one of the messages that we that I talked about with them was I told them, I let them know, look, you know, I got periods that I'm not really doing good. I know there's periods mommy's not doing really good, yeah, but we all have to grow and we all have to provide value to others. One of the conversations I had with the oldest, I said, especially you, you know, you got to use this with your friends. You got to share this story. You know, you got to tell this to your friends and your buddies and let them know about what you've been through because there's no better experience for them to maybe make better decisions based off of someone that has experienced loss and experiencing pain in their lives. Man, can you give, um, can you give some specifics on how you and your wife have navigated through this? Because quite frankly, I, I don't remember what the statistics are because I just had Granger Smith on the podcast. It's high. Um, it's high. It's high. It's yeah, it's really high. Yeah. Um, but the story I'm telling myself is the relation, and I, I don't know you that well, obviously at all, but the story I'm telling myself, the look in your eye, the tone in your voice is you're not going to become one of those statistics. Well, we're very but, resilient, man. We're very resilient. Yeah. We, what helps is we both have a common goal. Um, we want, we want to have a marriage. We want to have yeah. a family. Um, which is why we've been through all these challenges and these obstacles and we've managed to stay together. That's one of the things we talked about because look, um, when things are happening like this, this is not something you talk about with people. It, nobody knew what we were going through. Nobody knew what we were going through. Um, not immediate family, not friends. They found out after when we already had opened, we opened the door and we were like, listen, this is going on. Right. But before that, Nobody knew anything, and it was all internal. 
Um, but we were very clear on what we wanted as a marriage. We were very clear that we wanted to have a family. But was it perfect? The answer is no. I can't tell you the amount of disagreements and challenges and obstacles we've had, right? Ups and downs. I mean, you could just name it. We've been through it. But we had a clear goal of what we want as a family, right? We really have a clear goal on that. And that's why we've been able to stay together through things like this, because we have a common goal that needs to exist between a husband and wife. Uh, Because that honeymoon stage, it fades. And then when, when life rocks you, you know, if you're not clear on what you want, you know, the, the outlet seems just to walk out. You think the pain's going to go away. The pain doesn't go away and challenges don't go away. You just, you just walked out, you know, um, and, and you got to ask yourself a question. This is important for all the dads on here. When I started to make some changes, I really wanted to give maximum effort of changing me. I wanted to give maximum effort on that. Not about asking my spouse, hey, are you self-improving? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? If you, if, you, if you start making changes in your life and you're doing it to try to prove a point to your spouse, you're going about it the wrong way, okay? You, you have to make the changes. You have to self-improve and you have to get better because you want to provide a better man or if you're a woman, a better woman for your spouse um, to provide that better person for them. And you got to know you're giving everything you can to that objective. So back to that question, I think we have a common goal of what we want. And that's really helped us, you know, and that's something that we've, we've thrived through this, not thrive, but we're moving and we're progressing through this Um, and maneuvering as we can, as the challenges come, right. And the obstacles come in our mindsets and our feelings and our emotions, how we're maneuvering through this. So the mindset is really around the agreement that we made to stay together through this, no matter what, we're both willing to do that. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. You know, going back to, like I said, Granger Smith, who came on the podcast uh, last last year in December, he uh, he talked about this moment that he had with his wife uh, when they had just lost their three year old son River to drowning, and they drew a line in the sand. They said, no matter what happens, no matter how much pain and anger and obstacles are going to come our way in the next, God only knows how long, because it's going to be a while, and they are going to come no matter what, we are going to stay together, period. And they both made that agreement. I heard him say that. I did hear him say that. I did hear him say that. And it sounds like you guys really did the same. We didn't, we didn't say those exact words. Um, but I did, I did have the conversation where I said, listen, you know, the statistics say that you don't last as a marriage when something like this happens. And if we don't put the work forward, this ain't going to last. It's just, yeah. it's just the way it is if we don't put the work forward. Because I think you also got to be realistic about where you're at and what you're doing. You know, everything's not pie in the sky, man. You got to be, you got to be on point, you know, and you got to put the work in. Because if you know the odds are stacked against you, you better put that work in. Because if not, it ain't going to work. It's not going to happen. You know, one thing is to say something. Another thing is you got to put work behind it too. You know, you really got to put a lot of work behind this. Because if you don't, it's kind of like you saying you have a plan to lose weight, get better, self-improve in different areas. But if you're not putting action behind that, it's all words. There's that's all theory, you know. The other thing I really heard you talk about too, and I don't know if you meant to or not, but is this your own self ownership in this? And I didn't hear once you talking about pointing the finger towards your wife of like, well, she better be doing her work too. There was there was substantial uh, descriptive words that you talked about when it came to like, this is my part to play in it. This is what I need to be doing. This is how I am going to constantly raise the bar in my own life, do my own growth, to make sure I'm the best that I can possibly be to navigate through this. And there, I didn't hear one inkling of finger pointing towards your wife of like, and she better do this, 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 and this, and this too. Yeah. You, you, the minute you do that, I think once again, you're operating at an ego the minute you do that, because the minute that you have an expectation of your spouse or somebody else to make those changes because you're putting the work in, you're going about it the wrong way. You know, what what you got to do is you got to give everything you can and you develop as much as you can um, because you, you believe that person deserves that. Right. And number two, you want to know in your heart that you're giving as much effort as you can to be able to have that desired result you want. But if you're, if you're calling out the other person, you know, that's just, 
that that's not healthy, man. That's not healthy. And you're just doing it for ego driven reasons, you know, and that's not why you get better. You get better because you want to be in alignment and you want to provide value and you want to get better and you want to do that stuff. Not because you want your spouse to do that, you know? Yeah. You got to lead from the front. I think that's important. <clears throat> you got to lead from the front in that area, but you have to do it unselfishly that you just, you want to get better and you want to provide a better human and person for your kids and your spouse. Cause at the end of the day, we can't control what they do. This goes for men or women. I agree. I can't control what my wife does, right? I can't control if she tomorrow wakes up and says, listen, I'm unhappy. I don't want to be with you. I can't control that. I can't control what decisions my kids make in the future, right? I can't control that stuff. The only thing I could control is the actions I put forth on a daily basis. Are they always going to be right? The answer is no, 100% no. But if you put more steps together going in the right direction, then the odds are then you could have a better path than if you don't. You know, it's just that's the bottom line in that area. I think that's where a lot of just human beings, I'm not just pointing out men here, but just human beings in general who are in relationship dynamics. The relationship dynamics is like, well, I'm doing this and she's not doing this and she's doing that and I'm doing this and she's doing this and I've done this and she didn't respond this way. And the one thing that we always have to remind ourselves is I don't have control over that. I'll never forget um, a movie that Sandra Bullock was in and Viggo Morgensen, Mortensen, I think his name is, uh, I think it was 28 Days, not 28 Days Later, you know, the, the movie about the zombies, but... 28 days, which was about, uh, basically her, her one month stint in rehab because she was now calling. And one of the guy, the, the, the character that Viggo Mortensen played, and I'm probably saying his name wrong, but he was in like Lord of the Rings and a lot of other movies, but he played a professional baseball player who was a pitcher mm -hmm. and he was in rehab because he was doing drugs and all kinds of bad things. And she was walking through the woods one day and he was throwing baseballs at like a mattress that was tied to like a tree. And he it's it's this really cool part in, in the movie where I think Sandra Bellock was kind of tripped up about like how she's doing the work and people in her life when she gets out of rehab, they're not doing this, they're not doing that, they're not doing this. And he made this incredible just point about doing the things that we have control over. And what he talked about, he's like, you know, he's like, when I'm on the mound, I control certain things. I control my stance, how I hold the ball, my wind up, and the release. Once that ball leaves my hand, that's somebody else's job. I can't control if the batter swings. I can't really control what the umpire says about the ball. I only control what I control. And once it gets down there, I release all control to whatever is going to happen at, at that plate is going to happen. And I thought that was a really cool way of taking ownership and knowing what it is that we control and what we don't. And you're right. The things that we control are our own actions, what we do, what we don't do. You know, the things that we say yes to, the things that we say no to, whether you decide to grow or you decide to numb yourself, one of the two, you know, the, those are, those are actions that we take. hundred percent. I'm curious. I'm curious as, as we just, as we wrap up and by the way, I just want to thank you again for coming on, man. And just sharing like just, just one of the most, one of the hardest things that a father, it's the hardest thing that a father will ever go through and you're sharing it with our audience. And, and I just want to acknowledge and appreciate you and thank you for that. I know that this is not easy. As you look to the future, you have this incredible son who's 15. You got this beautiful daughter who's 11. You've been married now 15 years. Knowing what has happened 18 months ago happened, but the story I'm telling myself with you and the type of individual you are is there's a sense of renewal and there's a sense of like, okay, it's now very clear to me in the direction I need to lead as a man, husband, and father. And it might look quite a bit different than what it used to. And I'm just so curious as these, as, as your two kids get older and, and you get further along in your marriage, what are the next 15 years for you look like and the direction you're going in with your family? <clears throat> um, number one is to minimize regrets um, and every angle possible time frame, and everything you can do. Uh, minimizing regrets with your spouse, with your kids, um, 
not being afraid to talk your mind, what's on your what's on your mind, what's on your on your heart. Um, that was a big mistake that we made with our with our oldest. You know, we we thought we would be so embarrassed because of the situations we were going through. And at the end of the day, none of that mattered, mattered Larry, because the minute that he passed away, you can no longer hide that. You can't hide that. You can't hide the funeral. You can't hide the news. You can't hide anything. So at the end of the day, when you're dealing with something, face it head on, regardless of what those consequences can be. So going forward, it's the realization that people are going to judge anyways. Um, doesn't matter what it is, right? If they would have said, oh, you know, because look, to an extent, as parents, you know, as a dad, man, you just... Our goal, what we want for our kids is to to be these good humans, right? And to have a family and, and to keep that path going and have a career and do things right. And when things get deviated like this, um, there's an element of failure in there, right? And it eats you up inside. It eats you up inside because you, you, you failed to an extent, you know? And um, that right there is comes to a point where you got to put yourself in a position that you cannot worry about what people think, regardless of how you're going to be perceived or what's your, your family. Just don't waste time on that. Number one. And number two, minimize regrets going forward in our lives. Minimize them as much as possible for our family. And uh, going forward, you know, like I have people Tons of people have reached out with the other podcasts I did, and I do like a call a week, you know, where people jump on and we talk and, you know, I'll do a Zoom call and stuff like that. And, you know, it's brought a lot of value to others. You know, it's a way of us helping others, you know. Um, I don't know what this can lead to long term. You know what I'm saying? I really don't know. I have no idea. Um, I just want to give as much as I can to help us heal as much as possible going forward uh, for us, you know, and, and, and for others at the same time, you know. And by healing, helping others to heal, you're also healing yourself. Is that correct? I believe that. I believe yeah, that. I, I do too. We, um, I, I have, <laughs> I have a therapist that I've seen for the past 20 years and, um, my wife and I too, we're really proactive with just different things that we want to be prepped for and learning. And my therapist called guys like me and you wounded healers. And I was like, wounded healer. When he first told me that, I was like, wounded healers. Like, what do you mean? He goes, you actually end up healing yourself by helping others heal hmm. because you're speaking healing out loud for others, the strategies to do so. And by doing so, you're more likely to execute those strategies yourself. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. He goes, actually, the best coaches, the best therapists are the ones who are teaching about the very thing that they struggled with themselves because they know it firsthand so well from people that have gone through it. So, uh, JC, I, I just want to share, man, thank you for what you're doing, man. I know it's not easy. Um, I want to make sure that everybody in the audience can connect with you if they want to, what the best way is to connect with you, to support you, maybe even to reach out to you and say, dude, I heard you on dad edge. And I just want to just, just thank you for sharing your story, man. I really, really needed it. What's the best way for guys to do that on IG. They could reach me at JC Batista four, three, eight, three. That's JC B A T I S T A four, three, at three, four, three, eight, three. Uh, that's really the main platform I have. Um, I'm starting to like, I want to put videos on YouTube. Um, it's on my IG. It's on my little handle there. Um, just to what's on my mind stuff like this because when i did the other podcast i realized there was a lot of reach people reaching out so i'm starting to realize there's a lot of people out there hurting with different things and uh you know there's a lot of people need help out there there's a lot of people yeah. need help out people struggling and uh you know i think it's, it's, uh, it's a way to help others so yeah they could reach me at ig they could dm me no problem anything like that they could reach out Guys, we're, you're not going to have to look far in the show notes uh, for that. We're going to have uh, JC Batista 4383, correct? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have that in the show notes for you guys, uh, along with um, any other resources that we mentioned in this podcast. You can just head on over to the dadedge.com forward slash Friday 138. Again, the dadedge.com forward slash Friday 138. JC, thanks for coming on, man. Um, from my heart to yours, from our audience's heart to yours. 
thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this, man. I know it wasn't easy, but you just gave us an incredible, beautiful gift of obviously your struggle, but also how you've navigated through it, which is so important. It's one thing to talk about the struggle, but it's, it's, it's another value add to like, Hey, let me give you a bit of a map and some breadcrumbs to, to work your way through this. Like I have. So thank you for that, man. I appreciate it, my brother. I really hope there's a lot of value for this for families and uh, 100%. that could impact some families out there. I agree, man. Thank you again, brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime.